Hey, good morning, everybody. Jen Cravassi at Jekyll Bates. It is Friday. TGIF, y'all. Thank goodness I fish. So, um, lots to get through. I've got a lot left to do. I've got some orders done, and I've got some orders that are going to be coming into the shop this morning. Um, okay, so just real quick, we're going to run through it. This is a rain, or no, I'm sorry, it's not a rainbow trout. This is a brown trout, and um, it's a splatter pattern. And a lot of the times what I'll do, instead of committing, I've, I've done some more technical uh, where you've got the, the red and the white complementary inside one another. For this, I'm just looking to see if the color combinations that I've used, a little bit of goldenrod, we've got a little bit of pink uh, into some sienna and burnt orange. And the, on the belly, I've got a little bit of tangerine and then the white. So all I'm doing here is just I'm going to throw this pattern for a couple of weeks to see if the color combinations on the base coat are pretty decent. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll go ahead and get more technical with it. And this is on a 120. This is the Schultz version. Um, there is another version that Dinger puts out that's much better. Um, it's, it's weighted. I mean, this has got a weight transfer system in it but it's not as heavy. This is obviously a lighter plastic and there's some some baits that you can really tell the difference and what I like to do is kind of get a bunch from different um, sellers and vendors and just kind of do a comparison. So what I've noticed right away with this one, this is the, the Duo knockoff SP120 version that's from Schultz and Schultz has pretty good products too. I'm not going to knock Schultz. I get some stuff from them. Um, but in specific baits, specifically the duo um, molds that are done at Dinger, it's just a far superior product. It's a little pricier, but if you have clients that are looking for something that's going to measure up to what duo does in the water, we're going to test this one. This is not proven yet, so I just I kind of just want to throw it for the next couple of weeks and see what it does. Um, this, on the other hand, boy, these have been proven and proven and proven and proven. These are really good. These are the darters. And enough said about that. I featured them in the, the last video, I think, that came out. Um, molten Lava, lipless. Not necessarily a, a gangbuster time of the year for lipless baits, but um, up north in stained waters, the water's still a little bit cooler. This bait is still going to be really effective up there, um, Potomac and north. These are hog snatchers. I haven't done this pattern in a while. I got a request from a client on one of these orders up here. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it and so much to where I'm probably going to auction one this weekend. Where is its twin? I did one in an S crank and it looks like, is that a bubble? It is. So we'll have a little bit of sanding to do with that in a second coat. That's one thing that um, you always have to check what's coming off your line. I have no idea how that got there. That is the strangest thing. Huh. So, anyways, um, that'll get sanded. Just a, a real thin grade, thin grit sandpaper, and then we can just dip it again because the rest of the bait, the integrity is fine. Um, these are real good, also in stained water. And these are also from Dinger. These are the S-crank molds that look exactly like S-cranks. So, love that guy. Brian, you put out good stuff. This is the Sugar Lake Craw, also on a 1.5. There we go. You can see I've got a little bit better lighting out here at the spray bench. We're going to see how that transfers into uh, a, a filming session. I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions, so we're going to try and knock out a filming session this weekend. Um, the heat indexes down here in Arkansas and the Delta region here in Jonesboro are going to be in the hundreds this weekend. So I'm probably not going to be on the water. I'm going to be hanging out in the air conditioning and spraying some cool stuff and having a good time probably editing some more videos. Gordon Riley, these are done for you. And then we have quite a few more craws that are just order fulfillments. And one more. Sugar Lake craw pattern. Great spring pattern. Um, I'm finding that a lot of the river craws stay this deep color red from here down to Texas and, and into, uh, and he gets its name from Sugar Lake in Mexico. Um, 
That's what they look like, folks. That real deep, ruddy color, especially we're starting to find them in the rivers around here where the, the craws are molting. This is a great time of year. Once that molt comes off, they're going to go that deep red, and their forage foods are going to change. So that's one of the reasons that I, I'm try, I try to be as consistent as possible with red craws throughout the year, at least in this area. Blue craws, yes, they do exist. Look them up. Go find yourself a blue craw online. And that's what we got for you today. We've got a lot more to do. Um, just a real quick note, I'm also testing this out. I've been using a Posh, which is that bright yellow monstrosity that sits on your face. The 3M is a little bit lighter weight. It's about $10 less expensive. It's supposed to be good for everything except for the heavy duty solvents that I use to clear coat, which normally once I dip, I'm out of the workshop for at least an hour until that smell dissipates. So we're gonna see how this is. So far, it seems to be pretty decent. Um, it's just got, it's got a flip up feature on it. It's got uh, the headband that comes around the top of your head, which is pretty good. That fits over your head. And then the bottom has a double strap that, uh, that, that goes around the back of your neck to hold in place. And I've been using it for about three days. Um, so far, it's lightweight, it's easy to breathe. I wear glasses because I'm Mrs. Magoo without my glasses. So um, pretty much it's, it doesn't fog my glasses up as badly as the Posh did. So the, the nose is a little bit more fitting. And um, I'm gonna leave a comment in the description below on where you guys can get this. I pulled it off of Amazon. It does come with papers and a warranty and where to get your cartridges. And the cartridges are also inexpensive to put on the filters again, um, right on Amazon. So I'm gonna leave that in the description below. So check out all the links. And most of my stuff now, I'm trying to build a pretty consistent list for you guys. Because I get a lot of questions on like where I get the alligator clips and where I get the helping hands and what kind of paints that I use. So I use a whole bunch of different stuff. And what we're trying to do, and see there's some more, there's some Model Air. That's the Vallejo and a lot of FWs. I tell you what, these FW. These are really, really good. They can be thinned. Um, I use the... 411 reducer. The 412, I think, is the pro version. There might be a 4030 out there. I'll leave all that in the description below. Um, some folks are complaining about the pearlescence being a little bit difficult to shoot through the airbrush. Um, raise your pressure up on the airbrush and try that. Sometimes you have to do a couple of coats on these. But anyways, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Janet Jekyll Bates, happy Friday, happy casting, and I'll see you guys on the way.